You ever use bag bomb? No. It's uh. Is that for your balls? No, no. It comes in a tin, and it's actually meant for like cow udders. Okay. You know, and farmers use it that for their hands. Oh, okay. I don't try them out. You know, it's uh, it's got t- loaded with lanolin. and you can't even like wash it off. You have to like wipe the stuff off. Right. I think. Well, I put that all over my elbow because I got that Cindy Lauper disease, I think. You know, on my elbow. It's, uh... That's fucked up. Time after time, it just keeps getting, you know, ashy. So, oh, I decided to... <laughs> and I didn't want to get the lanolin all over. Okay, so we're talking about absolutely nothing yeah, today is... on Cities of Blood Podcast. <laughs> this is the Halloween episode. Oh, man. Uh, tomorrow's trick or treat. And, oh. uh... Oh, wait. Where'd our candy go? Uh, well, uh, the cats get it? They must have taken yours. Oh, it's over there on the end table is your, uh, your pieces. That's all right. I'll eat it later. I'm, shouldn't, I shouldn't, I'm on a diet. I'm yeah. shouldn't eat candy anyway. Plus, you shouldn't be crunching the microphone. Arr, arr, yeah. arr. So, anyways, we're, uh... There's been a lot of murders lately here in Sacramento. I, two I can think of off the top of my head that happened at the same crime scene. Yeah, the uh, what the two in North Sacramento the here, Citrus Heights or whatever it was. Was that the uh, the, the woman and the, the man who executed the woman? Yeah, yeah, right in front of the neighbors, in front of the cops. In front of, well, yeah, the, yeah, that's right. The cops were there only like a minute on the scene, I, and, barely a minute. They said he shot her, and then they they uh, just they shot, shot him, him. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah, and uh, I don't even have- the the story was that at, at early morning hours uh, in was it Citrus Heights or Carmichael? I thought it was Citrus Heights. Citrus Heights. A car crashed into a wall at an apartment complex, um, like an Adobe type wall. That's yeah. what it looked like in the video. Uh, uh, screeching crash. Then it was two people arguing. The police were called. This all happened in a very short span, span of time. Yeah. Um, though when the police arrived, there was three officers. I don't know if there were three separate units or two units and three officers, whatever. It was three officers. Um, they were arguing. They were arguing. He was threatening. Uh, he pulled his gun and shot her point blank range. And the officers, in a split second, returned fire. Um, luckily, no one else was injured. Because there were some stray bullets that went into a couple doors of the apartments, through a couple windows. There was a, I think they said dog, but it could have been a cat. There was another animal that did take a uh, a fragment of a bullet, apparently. Hmm. Um, the dog, the animal is okay, oh, though. It was a dog, I think. It was a dog, okay. Yeah. Um, and that is that. They still, it, I think in the last podcast, we kept saying, this is breaking news. Uh, at eight o'clock on Wednesday, this is we're fifteen hours into this investigation. Yeah, that's or eighteen news. hours. Well, yeah. There's been a hostage standoff going for <clears throat> all day today, right? There's, oh, I didn't know, hear about that. My goodness, see, this is uh, Sacramento has been on fire. Literally, the uh, the did you see about the, the guy opening up that entrance in the freeway to let people off of five and, yeah. and break through on that. Yeah, that was just yesterday. They're talking that about. was pretty scary. There was like an opening in the fence, and people were driving into the uh, what would have been Dirt should be a lanes. gully that separates the freeway and another yeah. field. Breaking news coming out of Oak Park this afternoon: hostages have been freed, including a 13-year-old girl. But a standoff is underway with an armed suspect still barricaded in a home. This started yesterday as some sort of a domestic violence call, but then turned into a chase. And a hostage situation soon followed. The pursuit ended around 5 o'clock last night on Mellow Court in the Oak Park neighborhood. The standoff is now in its 19th hour this noon. CBS 13's Marissa Perlman is there with what we are now learning. Marissa, hi there. Hi, Dina. Yeah, hostage negotiators are here. Not sure if you can hear them right now, but we just heard them speak to the suspect, asking him to come out of this house here on Mellow Court with his hands up. We also just heard a loud flashbang go off near the home here. 
Sounds like negotiators here are using all tactics possible. We just saw a robot going into the house here as well. This is sometimes used as a way to check the area to have safe eyes on the property. Now, we want to take you back to last night to give you a timeline here. Scary moments caught on Ring video showing the suspect dragging a 13-year-old girl into this random house in this neighborhood using her as a human shield. You can see the video here showing that now inside a family who lives in this Mellow Court home. Police say the suspect knows that 13-year-old victim, but none of his other hostages. Again, as you mentioned, Tina, this all started as... He's just walked into a stranger's house. More than wow. Four hours ago. And after talking to the victim, police started looking for a suspect in a white car. And just before 4 p.m., police found the suspect, tried to pull him over. He then led them on that chase throughout the city. It all ended up here in Mellow Court. Uh, now, family members of the people who live in this house tell us um, as of eight this morning all of the hostages have been released again the suspect still inside and we have spoken with relatives of the family who live in that house they tell us the family is very scared all five families related who live uh, here on Mellow Court. Uh, again, they're just waiting for more answers. Neighbors and family members waiting to get back into their house as we continue to learn more about this very active situation. Back to you. Yeah, that was my next question, Marissa. We know that those families last night were evacuated, so you are saying they're still not allowed back. Those neighbors... Shit, can, I think that's some shit. Somebody comes in your house, takes you house, and then kicks you out of your house. Mm -hmm. So I'm just... Uh, Looking this up real quick. Mellow Court is between, what is that? Martin Luther King and Stockton Boulevard. Pretty much dead in the center. Closest to 14th Avenue. Um, just a bunch of, like, yeah, landmarks. There's a Martin Luther King Boulevard in... Uh... Well, there's a Martin Luther King Boulevard every in town. every town, but and and like most of them, it's not the best parts of town. No, no. yeah, it's in that. Uh, it's probably. Uh, I mean, for people watching that don't know Sacramento, it's it's in it's definitely in Oak Park. Glory, I would say, Glory Bound Street Ministry is the nearest sort of landmark I can find. Like. Rick's Wireless is over there. But yeah, it's definitely in the heart. <laughs> Fairly close to... That's Oak Park, and Oak Park supposedly has been gentrified, but probably not that part of it. Oh, kind of over by... Um, uh, not Capital. Christian Brothers is right over there, too. Pretty close to there. About a half a mile, quarter mile. So on, on the other side of town, on the north side of town, we have... Uh, Looks like two people killed in North Sacramento. One of them's a, a friend of a, or a brother of, of a friend of ours. Yeah, it's definitely a, our um, our good friend Nehemiah, aka Nuck Nuck Johnson, referee here in California. Our condolences. Very much so, Nuck. Really sorry. It's a uh, pretty terrible. It's a. Uh, there's no information on that. Apparently, they don't have nobody's in custody and no, no suspects. Yeah, it's a uh, random act of violence, is what it's being shot and killed in North Sacramento. Could have been a gang initiation, something like that. I mean, Sir, I know in Nuck Nuck's family, I highly doubt that. No, I just mean the area. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The, this this area, unfortunately, that I live in, uh, right. North, North Sacramento, and North Sacramento does have. Um, in fact, what's interesting, we should have done this, is there's a, there's a website out there that I think it's Gang Maps, and it tells you what street your or what gang your street belongs to. Really? Yeah, so I, I believe this street is Nortenos. I could be wrong, though. I don't want to start a war. Um, I know that the school is off limits. That's that's uh, yeah, all, most all schools are always well. They've limits. agreed recently it's neutral, but they've had problems there before. Oh, really? And then, uh, you know, across the street is a mixture of Bloods and Crips, depending on the street you're on. Because I remember when I was like, I don't know, I'm gonna say I was probably junior high age in the area that I live in. The hmm. elementary school that was closest to me it was, uh, I guess, what would be the eastbound side was the Bloods and the westbound side was the crips like mm -hmm. that's what separated their like lines yeah but like there was to be no shenanigans 
Yeah. At the school, at or around the school. Yeah. And that was 30 years ago at this point. This is another North Sac. Well, right now. A person is dead after a shooting in a car crash in North Sacramento. Investigators saying the shooting happened on Traction Way. The man who was shot was headed to the hospital when he was involved in a crash near Hurley Way at Morse Avenue. He died at the scene of that crash. That's up the road. Yeah, so I mean, I know where Hurley and Morse is, and I certainly know where Traction is. Yeah. Um, but so he was headed. So that means he was headed to Morris Avenue, Kaiser. Yeah, headed to the emergency room and killed in a car accident. From being shot, though. I, I don't know. Honestly, it, it could have been either. Um, so that we have that. There's a what a double fatal shooting in Carmichael. Mm -hmm. He saw that. That. Um, what was the story behind that? Do you remember this one? No, that's the one we were talking about. Oh, that's the that's the the first one. We that's the first about, one with, the, with about. the guy and the girl. Yeah, so it was in Carmichael, not such a sights. Yeah, Carmichael, and that okay. that was the the execution. The execution, and then that's when the cops shot him. That's when uh, even the what did they call him? Like the the media officer or whatever. Yeah, she just flat up came out. And she goes, "It was an execution. He executed her in front of three officers, so. three three deputies." Terrible things here in Sacramento lately. Yeah. Um, I mean, the rest of the state is burning up, and luckily we're dodging some of that. But uh, Well, you know, we had that, uh, it was either Saturday or Sunday, Rancho Cordova caught on fire. Rancho Cordova was yep, on fire. on that, you know, where, um, not, not there, um, the, the, the tax people for the state. EDD? Is that what that is? I'm not sure. Where's the building at? Off of White Rock? It's off, no, it's over off of like uh, Butterfield on the Folsom Boulevard side. Oh, okay. That side caught on fire. Wow. Like they controlled it really quickly, but for a minute it got real scary. Okay. We got we got the we got the notification that we may have to evacuate. Really? Yep. Yeah. Even though we're about three and a half miles from that little part, uh, they were like, "Yep, yeah, nope, you you might have to evacuate." Good job, Rancho yeah. Fire Department. So, and this then show. of course, then there was the fire that was right on Arena Boulevard, right across the street from the old Arco Arena that the Kings used to play at. Yeah, they shut down both both ends of I five. Is that where the when that the was Sunday? Had, is that when the people had to break through the? Uh, I believe so. That was where it was. Happened. Yep. Yeah, my relatives keep calling me, and you know, and are, are the fires near you? And Fraser, luckily, right. You know, I know I, uh, last night my mother and I were having dinner and I a video popped up. It was uh, somebody with one of the SFP or one of the SFFD uh, trucks was filming. Yeah. And it's awful and like they were just driving around filming. Really? Like I, I don't know if they were coming from or going to, but they were filming as they were doing. And. It's one of those weird things where it's devastating and it's awful, but it looks very pretty, mm -hmm. you know? But it's like, it'd be very pretty if it was like in a Disney cartoon type thing. Yeah. You know, it'd be a, probably a scene that won an Academy Award. Yeah. But it's like, then you think about it and it's like, oh man, it's just ruining yeah. acres well, and acres and acres and acres. In the air and animals and people's homes yeah. and everything. Would you hear about the... The horse that went back in to get his friends. Yeah. Yeah, it was somewhere out there. And uh, I don't know if they, like, released the horse from, like, a trailer or whatever. And yeah. he ran back into the fire to yeah. get his, basically get his buddies. Yeah. And did. He did. Yeah. I don't know if he got all of them, but I, the, the, the picture I saw was him with, like, five horses. I don't know how people can uh, evacuate the properties and just leave their livestock. You know, especially in a corral yeah, or in a barn, it's like at, le at least leave them out so they have a chance to fucking well, run. That that's what um I know that when the last big fires hit, I like probably last year, yeah. they said just let your animals go. Yeah. So two things are going to happen: they're either going to die yeah. or they're going to survive, and you'll find them down the road. Down the road yeah. And a lot of times, those animals, out of pure instinct, no go no to go back home. Yeah. Whether they are trained to or not, yeah. they just know. Yeah. The only problem is when things get burned like that, that smell yeah. changes. Changes the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Because I know they said that uh, uh, up here in more of our 
sort of foothills more towards the coast mm -hmm. that there's a bunch of horses that they're trying to wrangle oh, yeah. because they're horses from the last fires that sort of just formed, migrated formed herd. and they for formed a herd and they're not really wild and they're not really tame anymore either. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, luckily, horses are one of those species that can survive mm -hmm. if you let them go. Yeah. Um, very hardy. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, besides the whole state damn near burning up, we've, uh, we've got in the state office uh, some people that are in trouble right now. And, I, I think it's going to get a lot worse. Yeah, I bet you there's going to be a like, full-on investigation into this because I don't think they're going to... I don't know. The explanation sounds dumb to me. I mean, it sounds feasible, but it sounds feasible if this were the 1950s and, you know, you were dealing with Barney Fife. You would think somebody um, in, in 2019 would realize that you don't hang a Nazi flag visible from the street inside of the state office, inside of any public office or building. I mean, really, it's... Uh, this is supposedly for what training purposes? Yeah, they said? yeah. The, the the what was told to the reporter who he basically said this is bullshit story. Yeah. If you watch that report again, he almost is like laughing. I don't blame him. And uh, you know, he says he was told off camera that uh, it was put up. Uh, because it was things that they had confiscated from prisoners, mm. and they were showing people what could be used as paraphernalia. You know, I think a giant red banner with a swastika, I mean, like straight up out of Hitler's, you know, a right. personal stash right. type shit. I think pretty much anybody on the planet knows one of those looks like. I think you could have probably just a little picture of one <laughs> rather than a flag that takes up an entire wall Window, yeah. as your training thing. I think they were using the example of things they confiscated from prisoners. The, yeah, that's what and it was. And so maybe that's, yeah, okay, wow, it's it's crazy that one of those, you know. It, Somehow got into some, prison. Got into prison or was made in prison. Right. You know, it, it, prisoners are pretty resourceful. So who knows? They they could have made it. Yeah. And what was the guy using it for? A blanket? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, it, it's um. And so so it's again. It's I feel like we keep saying this. It, it's sort of a breaking news story that happened today or yesterday, and we're not getting much of an explanation. But I just know it ended with the statewide parole people, whatever yeah. commission, is now launched a full investigation. Yeah, this is... Heads are gonna roll. Exactly. Heads are gonna shit, roll. Shit rolls downhill. This is an oh, embarrassing yeah. thing, and, and those responsible... Um, yeah, you get ready for a shitstorm, buddy. Yeah, you're, you're not... You're not getting a job anytime soon. Bright idea. That one was. Yeah. And and, and it was... It's what it, what they say. Was that 8th and yeah. K or... I mean, literally next to the Capitol. I mean, like... Couldn't you just had it draped over a table or something, you know? Yeah, why wasn't it on a table? It's not, it, you had to hang it. <laughs> it's, hey, we found this. Why? Yeah. I mean, did, did you... Did, did it, it must have took two people to hang it. Did you get a level? Did you make sure, hey, buddy, you know, can you help out? Yeah. At what point did you two not think maybe this wasn't a good idea? I don't know. Well, that's... That's the thing, Phil. There is no thinking when it comes to hanging a the SS flag, the Nazi flag. It's just, it's the universal symbol of hate, right? You know, going strong since World War Two. It's, it's well, shit everybody even before knows. then. You know, it's like well, yeah, the, the Nazis started before then, absolutely. Yeah. But it's you know, it's relatively a twentieth century symbol. You know, the hate association with it anyway, mm -hmm. and. Everybody who's, you know, been in public school system, you know, or watched television mm -hmm. should know. That's um, <sighs> some smart people we got over there. Dumb shit. So, anyways, uh, that was a real dumb one. We were just talking about the uh, the fires that are erupting all over the state. Yeah, from from basically the Bay Area to Los Angeles. You know, they had to do the... Uh, uh, evacuations down there, you know, uh, 
And on a lighter note, uh, LeBron James paid for the uh, Taco Tuesday trucks to hit up the fire bin down there. That was kind of cool. Oh, is that what uh, what he did? I heard yeah. he donated, like, was it half a million dollars? No, that was John Cena. Oh, that was Cena. John that. Cena, uh, the, yeah, the 16-time world champion John Cena. He wow. he uh, donated a half a million to the uh, firefighters. So, it's pretty cool of him. 16 time. Is yep. that as many as Ric Flair? That's tied for Ric Flair. Wow. Yep. So he's just, he's just got to come back and get one more, and he's the he's the goat. That's something. Because God knows he's been way better with his money than Ric Flair ever was. Yeah, well, you know, buying uh, 200 kamikazes a night. And <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and Cena's only had one marriage. Right. Oh, yeah, no kidding. It's, he uh, almost had two, but they, they called that off. I think most guys couldn't carry the, the, the Nature Boys bar tab, you know. And Cena's made more in one night than Flair made in most of his career. At different generations, yeah. you know. That's that's what happens with sports is, you know, you, oh, yeah, you get the guys that, that make the breakthroughs and all of a sudden make the sport great, you know, just like the NBA, you know, yeah. the, the players in the 70s. You know, the magic, oh. it's, uh, well, before Magic Johnson, you had Dr. J, you know. Um, what was it? Magic Johnson only made, like, uh, it might not be this much. He only made, like, $14 million in his career. Yeah. And he played for 12 years. I believe that. Yeah. I, I totally believe that. How much did Will Chamberlain make, you know? Probably I mean? not that much. It's And these guys are legends, mm -hmm. but... Uh, but the big money didn't come along until like the nineties. Well, right? shit, man! Look, they're going to Saudi Arabia tomorrow. And they're, well, they're probably already there right now. Do another crown jewel for WWE. Didn't, didn't Jordan? Jordan started making really good money in the eighties, right? Didn't it? Wasn't he like no, a? Jordan didn't make that much money. He made all his money off Nike. Well, okay, that's what I'm. His thinking. endorsements. No, yeah. I'm talking about his NBA paycheck. Yeah. Only NBA. Right. With the Chicago Bulls and the Washington Wizard played. Paid Michael Jordan was nothing compared to what he got an endorsement. Like if Jordan was playing right now, he'd be a fifty million dollar a year player. They're searching for an inmate who walked away from. They're searching for the inmate who walked away from the Tuol Tuolumne County camp in Jamestown. Oh, shit. A forty year old inmate walked away from the Sierra Conservation Center baseline conservation camp in Tuolumne County. Uh, staff said they noticed that Jason Stout forty was missing during an inmate count around 7 a.m. Wednesday. Uh, authorities searched the camp, but Stout was gone. Stout is 5'9", uh, 170, blue, blue eyes and bald head. He was last seen wearing an orange jumpsuit. Uh, uh, oh, but he had a gray sweatshirt and gray pants. Uh, and he is going to blend right into the homeless population. Yeah. He is serving a 12-year sentence for first-degree burglary. Uh, He'll blend right into you, If you see Jace, or no, I think it's Jace this is, this is call 911. This is the the other danger of, uh, of or the other challenges that, that one of the other challenges of, of having such a large and vast homeless population here in California is that a prisoner can disappear into it pretty easily. And, uh, and almost not be found, not be noticed even. Well, I mean, especially now with the evacuations and the fires. Oh, yeah. Everybody's too busy with that yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're not yeah, going to even worry about that. Where did he disappear at? Tuolumne? Tuolumne County. Are there any fires over there? I would imagine. See, all he has to do is... Tuolumne find, South, right? All he has to do is find one house that's, you know, everybody had to leave or whatever. He can go in there, get himself a change of clothes, grab a little food and... Maybe steal a car. Yeah, who knows? Horse. Something. Buggy. Yep. It's a... Uh, Bicycle. You know, you, that, and like I said, once once he finds himself near uh, Sacramento or, or the Bay Area or, you know, Southern... Anywhere near he's a major city. Yeah. He can just blend right into the homeless oh. population. And you wouldn't even... Yeah. Any, it'll take him a long time to even get noticed. Yep. Hell, if he doesn't die in the fires. Yeah. You know. If he's, I mean, if he's near a fire, yeah. Well, you know, and the other thing is, it's a, I don't know. Twelve year sentence sucks, but at the same time, you're going to be living on the lamb for how many years? Right. What the rest of your life? You think? Well, I would imagine you would be you there know, the rest of your life. I don't think he's, you know, like on uh, El Camino and shit, where you know you hire a guy to give you a new identity, and you know. 
Not that this guy has like $150,000 for that kind of crap anyway, but a lot of people, I don't think, I don't think I would have the endurance to be able to live on the lamb for any length of time like that. That just seems exhausting to me. I mean, if you had the, the means and the, and could be, you know, like, um, we found out on, like Whitey Bulger. Yeah. Well, yeah, he had money stashed uh, yeah. away and things like that. Maybe, maybe if I could be like Whitey Bulger and I could escape, yeah, no problem. But I, we, I did, we just talked about on last episode how you can actually run a business from prison. Yeah. All right, so it's legal to do that as long as you let the the warden or the prison officials know that yeah you're do what you're doing. Um, that you know, I mean, there's an opportunity right there for anybody who's in prison. You know, not to mention, I, I th- they give you the opportunity for education while you're in there and all these other things. So, you know, he could have tried to make the best of the 12 years and maybe get an early release and come out better prepared. A better person. You know, just better prepared. Maybe have an edu- a couple, a little bit of education. I mean, in 12 years, you can get a law degree. Exactly. I don't yeah. know if as a felon you can have a law degree, you but... Can. Okay, can you? there's a lot of jailhouse lawyers. I knew, uh, I knew one of them, Jay. It's, uh, so, yeah, no, for real. <laughs> They're... Uh, the smarter guys end up lawyers and when they when they come out after any length of time. Huh. Uh, because, unfortunately... Uh, they have a lot of time to study? It's, it's that, and it's, it's like you. You can read and write well. You'd be very useful in prison because, unfortunately, a lot of the prisoners, like maybe 80% of them, or maybe less than that, but a lot of them can't read, can't write, yeah. can barely read, can barely write. They were either pushed through the school system, didn't see a school system at all in some cases, no. um, or from the worst part of the worst city that you could imagine. You know, it's, it's that type of shit, unfortunately. And so these are the guys that, you know, if they're trying to write their girlfriend right. or read a letter from their girlfriend or their mother's about to be, you know, evicted or something, you know, if you can help them at least communicate. Right. You know, at, um, you become the almost like scribe. Yeah, you're, you're, you're useful, you know, and, and, and out of that, you become a jailhouse lawyer because normally the guys who end up finding out um, information about their own cases, yeah. like trying to do their own appeals because they get that experience on their own case. They're willing to help out somebody else for, you know, some cigarettes, you know, some commissary goods. You know, it's it, almost like a bunch of old time pro wrestlers. Yeah, I've been around a lot of them that couldn't read or write or really like. Uh, they could sign an autograph because they practiced, like, you know, like almost like muscle memory. Yeah. But I tell you right now, they couldn't sign their name on a check. Jesus. That's tough in, in this world today. Yeah. You like, know. you know, like, oh, uh, man, I'm just going to be like, the, the great grappler can't be on your check, bro. When right. people still wrote checks, that's how old I am. Um, it's a, that's, a, that's a scary thing, especially today with everything being on the computer. The computer, a lot of, you know, some people who aren't, don't use them all the time are afraid of them, but really it's nothing but reading, isn't it? You know, I mean, well, if, if you can read a set of, every time I do something on the computer, it's, um, it's a matter of reading the next instructions and, mm-hmm. oh, that's how you do it. Well, and I also, too, it's like that comes to, like, we're still from the generation where we learned how to write. Oh, yeah. The cursive? Yeah. They stopped teaching cursive like 10 years ago. Really? No, 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 there is no school that teaches handwriting. Wow. I'm telling you right now, because of what I do, I deal with I, I, people who are from 14 to, I'm going to say 30, say to me all the time, I don't have a signature. I just say to them, write your name. Put an X. I don't care. I don't have a signature. I hear that at least... Five times a day, and there's 40 people I work with, 45, and I'm going to tell you right now, they all say the same thing. Five times a day? E- easily, if not more. When I was a kid, I used to practice signing yeah, then, my name. What do they need to sign their name for? Everything is on a computer. Everything is on your phone. Oh, just electronically hit this button, and it's an electronic signature on your phone. 
See, I used to watch my father, <laughs> and I used to, you know, and, and my grandpa. Oh, it's a joke with my mother and I. Yeah. She sometimes doesn't wear her glasses when we go out to dinner. Yeah. And I signed the check with her name, <laughs> and I said, I forged your name in high school all the time. I could do it. No worries. <laughs> See? There wow. are thousands of ch- dollars in dinner bills over the last year that I've signed her name. God. I have my generation to, like, is it my generation to blame for this? Whoever raised these kids, man. No, no, no. This is the, this is, this is that new era of that handwriting isn't needed. It's, yeah, but it's probably technically our generation. God, so nobody's going to sign anything. It'll just be thumbprints, right? Uh, Oh, that's the other thing. People do that all the time. They'll put their finger on the, the scanner. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, don't you just take my fingerprint? No, idiot. Wow. I feel old as shit. These kids are are expecting, you know, biometrics. They have no... I'm telling you right now, these kids really want the the arm scanner thing. Uh, Yeah, the little... Like, what was that movie with... Or or the movie with... um, Little grain of rice. No, Timberlake, when they have the thing in their arm, it says like, oh, you have this much money in your bank account, yeah. and it's your phone, and it's... They have that in, uh, is it Sweden right now? They're, yeah. They've done it. It's, they, they put a, something the size of the grain of rice in the palm of your hand, and uh, and people are doing it. Now, <clears throat> for all the, the Bible toters out there, you know what this, you know, rings the bell for, yeah. you know? It's, it's Armageddon. The time. end of days. Yeah, well, because it's that mark, you know, that no one will be able to buy or sell without. And it's supposed to be in the, uh, is it on the forehead or in the right, the palm of the right hand type thing? Ooh. Yeah. Now, I wonder, I don't know this for sure, but. How would Johnny have it? it what if the dimensions of the rice, the little, the little chip, yeah. are like, like six millimeters? By six millimeters. By, by six, six millimeters. millimeters. Oh, my God. See, you know, everybody thought it would come from the Catholic Church, but it's really the Swedish. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. It could be a Swiss. I thought it was one of, the, one of those, you know, uh, you betcha countries over there. <laughs> one of those countries that has really good cheese and, and chocolates. Exactly. You know, like cold weather foods, right? That's the only right. That what are those countries that have like a fermented shark and shit? I was gonna say it's some sort of weird fish you know, thing that that we all go. Ugh. That's what I mean. It's like you invent something wonderful like fondue, and then here's some fermented fish or shark. Oh my god! They, what's the what's the fish that they have in like Sweden and Norway that it's uh? Isn't it some type of shark they they ferment for no, like seven years? It's like it? a fit. It's like a long fish. We're seeing it on like Anthony Bourdain and. Mm. Andrew Zimmer, and I can't remember what it's called because it has like a weird name. And it, they say when you pull it out of the ocean, it smells weird. Really? And so it's like even when you for, do all that stuff, it. But I was like, it's so good, and I'm just like, it, really? No, it just seems gross to me. So I like shellfish. Grew up with them, you know. You throw a lobster, a crab, a mussel in front of me, I'm gonna eat that mofo. That's what I was gonna say about juicies on the on the Delta. They have. Uh, one, one, they, where, whenever you order a meal there, you get a free uh, carafe of wine. Okay. Right? No, it ain't good. It's. Well, I'm sure it's not the best wine ever. Right? Yeah. Two buck Chuck? It, it, I don't know if it's that. <laughs> you know, to be honest with you. Dollar, dollar 25 Chuck? Yeah, it could be a box. I don't know what it is, Ooh. but uh, but it's rough. But it's, but you get a carafe, carafe of wine with it. They have one night of the week where it's like uh, lobsters are like buy one, get one free or something. <laughs> About to Uber to this bitch. Exactly. That's what I, you know, I saw that and I'm like, oh shit, I need to look it up. The problem is you can probably get an Uber there, but I don't know if you can get an Uber Nothing back. back. No. That's uh, well shit, I'll drive. I don't like drinking the wine anyway. Uh, I'll drink the shitty wine. But uh, yeah, and I'll eat <laughs> that lobster's worth the trip. Uh, we'll take four lobsters, please. No, 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 we want eight. <laughs> right. You can't leave with a donkey bag. No problem. We're not, we don't plan no, on it. Leave. Nope. No, no, no doggy bag necessary. Lots of butter, though. Yep. I'm not joking. I could eat four lobsters. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, the, or, and shrimp. Get oh, you I, dozen, two dozen. Dude, you know kilo. what we gotta do? We need a freaking one of these days. Uh, hit up Red Hawk. Oh yeah. Fridays is the all you can eat seafood buffet. Yeah. And I got the gold card, so it's only like thirty bucks a piece. Really? Oh. Phew. 
Let me know when Dude, you want to go. I, they yelled at me because I took my plate. Yeah. And I just dug it in the shrimp <laughs> and walked to my thing. And then went and got another bowl of <laughs> sauce. That's awesome, yeah. That's and, then, and then, sir, you can't do that. And I said, I can't do what? <laughs> and I said, I didn't think I could take the whole tray to my table. Do you want to take him back? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I've already touched him. Oh. Uh, that's too... Yeah, I, anything uh, seafood-wise, I, man, that's my favorite. All right, so, Phil, you have to tell the story. Which one? The one you told me earlier. Oh, this is... Uh, <laughs> this is our clickbait. This is the funniest search I've, I've done recently, or the funniest results of a search I've done recently. So, if anybody's ever watched the show, It's Always Sunday in Philadelphia, I watched a, uh, a recent compilation of clips of Mac, and Mac has gone from being fat to being really in shape. Well, that was the compilation I watched. And there's this one scene in it where um, where they show Mac lifting up D by the crotch, about at least a foot off the ground. Yeah. And uh, and I saw it. I almost like fell down laughing. I didn't. I, I couldn't believe what the hell I was seeing. I hadn't seen that episode. And uh, and so I went to go do a search, and I did a search on the thing to find out. And I, I put uh, Mac picks up D by crotch. Right. First thing that comes back on there is Mac D Sandy Crotch Eyeshadow. That still makes me laugh. And it's real. It's real. It's that it was Star. What's the guy's Kenny Star? D- it's David Star, David isn't it? David Star. This the somebody very. I'm really not up on my uh, YouTube makeup artist, but well, this guy's like uber famous. Uh, in fact. The real funny part was was after I told Elsa that, I told Elsa about it, she looked up. The oh, guy. you mentioned Elsa on the show. She's gonna be mad. Oh, so I I, I I called her. She couldn't believe that there was something called Sandy Crotch Eyeshadow. Anyway, thought it was a joke. Looked up the guy. Then my cousin Dawn, she calls me tonight. She starts mentioning the same guy. And that's weird. It's like that. Uh, not so. I'm I'm trying to look up his. his you ever guy. seen Repo Man? You yeah, know, when the when the when the crazy guy you know starts talking about you know connections about you know you might be thinking about a plate of shrimp and then somebody might say plate or say shrimp, you know that whole scene. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what that reminded me of. Oh, it's Patrick Star. Patrick Star. Patrick Star. Patrick Star. Sandy Crotch Eyeshadow. I just I what a name. I, I just put in Sandy Crotch Eyeshadow and it came in. It came right up. So yeah, that was my funny uh, story. So. And it's it's uh, carried by Mac. Carried by Mac. Which I believe is still a pretty popular brand. You ever use Bag Balm? No. It's, uh, is that for your balls? No, no. It comes in a tin, and it's actually meant for, like, cow udders. Okay. You know, and farmers use it that for their hands. Oh, okay. I don't try them out. You know, it's, uh, it's got t- loaded with lanolin. and you can't even, like, wash it off. You have to, like, wipe the stuff off right. type thing. Well, I put that all over my elbow because I got that Cindy Lauper disease, I think. You know, on my elbow. It's, uh... That's fucked up. Time after time, it just keeps getting, you know, ashy. So, I decided to... And I didn't want to get the lanolin all over. (laughs) What's it called? It's not called Cindy Lauper's disease? Oh. Look, there's diseases you want and there's diseases you don't want. I'm pretty sure you don't want Cindy Lauper disease or Lou Gehrig's Wade Boggs that disease. You don't want. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. No shit. Nothing wrong with Wade Boggs disease. You know. Oh man. So wow, this is a depressing episode. <laughs> oh man. So, God, for all the things we had to talk about, we haven't talked about a lot. <laughs> Let's talk about what? I said, for all the things we talked about, yeah. we haven't talked about a lot. A lot? Yeah, we haven't talked about much. No. We, we really sort of glassed, glassed, glossed over everything. Seriously. This episode, I don't know what's... It's all right. It's probably going to be the most viewed one we have. Right. We have done like zero <laughs> We mentioned Patrick Starr. We mentioned Patrick Starr. Patrick yeah. Starr. So cross-reference that. Patrick Starr. Well, somehow we'll tag we'll tag him in the video. Eh, it's all right. I think we talked about enough. Well, hey, look. I, before we go though, seriously, uh, to our friend Nuck Nuck, uh, man, yeah, heart right. breaks for you, bro. You know, if you need anything, there's a whole community uh-huh. that could uh, uh, help you out, and uh, we're all here for you, man. Yeah. Just absolutely awful. 
it's too close to home sometimes. Yeah. Like, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Absolute heartbreaking. So, anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. Well, I'm Alex Trevko. I'm Phil DeSero. And this has been the Cities of Blood podcast. We'll see you next time. See ya.